Brian Cook on the phone with Dr. Isaac Wolf, who is the director of Miami Neuroscience Center in, uh, in Miami, Florida, correct? Correct. That is correct, Brian. Fantastic. And, you know, and we're talking about uh, a, a major misdiagnosis uh, of suicide disease. Um, and, you know, you as a medical professional, tell us a little bit about um, the uh, trigeminal, is, is, am I saying correct? Correct, that's correct. Trigeminal Tri neuralgia. Neuralgia, correct. Tell us a little bit about that for people who don't know. Okay, so trigeminal neuralgia is an incredibly painful syndrome that occurs in the face, and it is located strictly in the face, that is described as the most painful jab of a knife cutting through my face or an electricity running through my face. The most important thing about it is that, Brian, is that it's episodic, meaning it comes and goes, and that almost no medication helps it. The reason it's important, though, to understand that this is a real clinical syndrome is that most patients first get seen by either dentists or oral surgeons. And as you know, many minority groups don't actually go see physicians or dentists. You know, African Americans or Hispanics like myself have a tendency not to seek medical help. But in this situation, it's essential because most people then have unnecessary procedures performed on them, including tooth extractions, root canals, you know, all kinds of dental work that isn't going to help because the actual pain is emanating from the patient's trigeminal nerve itself, deep in the middle of their brain. Recognizing that most patients, or approximately 85% of patients, will get relief with the appropriate medication. If that medication doesn't help, then specialized neurosurgeons like myself can clearly help these patients get relief. Wow, that's interesting. And then you're seeing an oversurplus of people uh, committing suicide because they cannot uh, get any type of relief from, uh, from that pain and that trauma. Well, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, many of these patients, because they, 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 they wind up basically not getting hurt because, mm -hmm. you know, they're having all kinds of unnecessary procedures done. The pain doesn't get any better. And in fact, many tend to overdose on unnecessary narcotics or just simply give up because, the, the, you know, they just cannot stand the pain. And so the whole purpose of, you know, this type of conversation is identifying the fact that this is a clear, you know, clinical syndrome that can be easily addressed by a specialist. At the Miami Neuroscience Center here, we've treated well over a thousand patients with gamma knife radio surgery for this and over 500 with what we call microvascular decompressions for this. So if you get an experienced team, it's, it's an easy syndrome to recognize and also to begin treating. Okay, now tell me, uh, what are some of the symptoms uh, for some people who may, uh, uh, I don't even know how to, how to even say it, uh, you know, contract um, this, this disease, if well, you will? Uh, okay, so, so you have to think about the patient population. The majority of these patients, though not completely, are going to be patients, you know, greater than 50 years of age, and normally women. The majority of the patients are women. Okay. And what they'll present with is a sudden onset of this stabbing or electric-like sensation in their face. And at first, you know, people think, well, it's probably a tooth. But, you know, a lot of these patients will have this pain behind their eye. Well, clearly it's not a tooth. Or they'll have it for a second or for 30 seconds, and then it'll go away. If, you know, this is where you have to distinguish between trigeminal neuralgia and, you know, facial pain due to, let's say, a tooth abscess. If you have a tooth abscess or a dental problem, it's usually chronic pain. It's usually going to be there all the time, and it's not going to come and go. And that's what I told you about the temporal aspect of this disease. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a kind of pain that people say, you know, I've never had anything like this, and I cannot live with this. Again, slightly and moderately different than most people's dental pain. Once you hear that and you associate it with the right kind of patient, you need to have these people see a specialist who treats facial pain. Because, as I said before, simply putting them on the right kind of medication will, will improve the symptoms in 85% of these patients and, and almost take it away simply on medical therapy. And examples of that are what we call carbamazepine or Tegretol or Lyrica. 
taking one or two tablets a day of this will, will get rid of the pain in about 85% of the patients. The patients that I see are the patients that are medically intractable and require more aggressive therapy. Wow. Okay. So where do we go from here? How can people find out more information on how to treat this or how, where to go for treatment? Well, there are there is a Trigeminal Neurology Association that they can probably look up. We also they can look up MiamiNeuroscienceCenter.com. We have a website that will explain the symptoms and and you know priorities in terms of treatment. Obviously, not everybody can come to Miami, but they can most certainly read about the, you know the different treatment modalities and what they entail. The thing about gamma knife reader surgery is that it, from the point of view of a surgical procedure, it's completely non-invasive. So we can focus a high dose of radiation on the trigeminal nerve, and about 85 to 90% of our patients will be cured from their trigeminal neuralgia this way. Okay. And uh, is there anything else uh, you'd like to add before I let you go? I do have one, one more follow-up, but if there's anything okay. else... Okay. Well, what I would like to add is that this is a treatable disorder, sure. and you just need to make sure that you're correctly diagnosed. Sure. Now, um, something that you said that really struck home uh, for many people in this country, um, you specifically said that it's seen disproportionately in the African-American and in the Latino communities. Uh, could you please help stress the importance of going to the doctor and getting regular checkups and screenings? Yeah, well, this is what I stressed. What I really was stressing is that in the Latino American communities like mine or in, you know, Afro-American communities, the problem is that they don't seek medical health mm -hmm. and don't seek medical care and therefore can be greatly misdiagnosed and it's, it's essential to seek the appropriate help so that the appropriate diagnosis is made and so that they can get the appropriate treatment. Fantastic. Well, thank you so very much, Dr. Isaac Wolf. We appreciate it, and we'd love to have you back on to talk about this further uh, so that we can help stress uh, the, the importance of uh, a healthy life, if you will. Thank you, Brian. Anytime. My pleasure.